this video goes over installing open Zuse Linux for the first time. I'm gonna break it down in two parts for you. The first part, I'm gonna explain a little bit about Zuse Linux and why using open Zuse. Second part, the installation process, which I'll show through actual install from creating a thumb drive all the way to boot up. The first part, okay, uh, part one of this, uh, why using open Zuse? There are plenty of reasons to talk about and here's a short explanation. Open Zuse is one of the most popular Linux distros out there. There are some strong points that make Open Zuse one of the finest choice out there. You are willing to give OpenZUSE a try, then you've come to the right place. Community-driven, free software, user-friendly, stability, support, looking to the enterprise are the main reasons. Community-driven, free software, it's free in terms of freedom, not price. The licensing is very friendly to um, those who are willing to study how it works, modify, give or sell copies to others and use whatever way you want. As a result, it's a popular distro among corporate world. User friendly, the second reason, even if you're new to the world of Linux, OpenSUSE is perfect for them. There's a bit of learning curve. Anything new is always difficult, right? But fear no. It's sometimes that any decent human can overcome. Stability, uh, which I uh, like, unlike other Linux distros, OpenSUSE is more about stability rather than experiment. Because of the nature of free software, it's a lot more secure and stable at the same time. Thus, it's easier to play around. As for the power users, it's easier to modify and configure. Support. OpenSUSE has a large community support behind it. It's funny community driven at the core. For any problem, the community is there to help you out. Looking to the enterprise is the uh, another main reason, OpenSUSE is a great introduction to ZUSE Linux Enterprise. Both share a common base, so you'll find a lot of familiarity between them. OpenSUSE is basically a free version of ZUSE Linux Enterprise. With that out of the way, let's get started with OpenSUSE installation. Before installing OpenSUSE, we need a few things. First of all, let's decide which flavor to choose. There are two flavors of OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, a rolling release, and Lip, a regular release. Uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed follows a rolling release model, meaning the software always gets the latest stable package from the OpenSUSE project. OpenSUSE Lip, on the other hand, follows the regular release model. Uh, it's released once a year with security and stability updates. Um, there won't be any significant change until the next annual release. Um, interestingly, OpenSUSE Lib shares a common base uh, system with ZUSE Linux, uh, ZUSE Linux Enterprise, as I said. Tumbleweed is recommended for developers, OpenSUSE contributors, and Linux enthusiasts, whereas uh, Leap is recommended for system admins, enterprise developers, and general users. Uh, please uh, go on OpenSUSE Leap website and uh, get OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, I'm gonna uh, installing this version of SUSE Linux. Uh, you can create a bootable media. Uh, in several ways, after you have obtained the OpenSUSE installation DVD image, burn it uh, to a DVD or create a bootable USB stick using live USB creator called Rufus. 
echa uh, or put iso uh, all of them are easy to use don't worry about that and uh, I would say that uh, you need some requirements uh, at least 2 gigahertz dual core processor better 2 gigabyte system memory over 40 gigabyte of free hard drive space either a DVD drive or USB port for the installation media and internet access is helpful and required for the network installer let's dive into the installation process use these instructions if there is no existing operating system on your machine or if you want to replace an existing Linux system first of all make a full backup of whole data if you are going to install uh, on your laptop or PC if you are afraid of making a quick uh, jump to OpenSUSE uh, or uh, data loss, uh, why not trying it out through virtualization? VirtualBox and VMware Workstation, uh, both of them are good virtualization software. All the installation process works the same. I'm going to explain the installation process over VMware Workstation. First, you need to create a new virtual machine. Follow me the instruction. Click on File, New Virtual Machine. You can choose Typical or Custom. Uh, click on Custom, Next. Uh, select Hardware Compatibility, ES6, uh, 6.5. Mm, it's a good choice next uh, select the ISO image I've downloaded before that uh, opens with a leap the latest version 15.3 Click on next. Uh, I want using UEFI feature during installation and I think there's a bug when you select operating system uh, on Linux you, uh, you will miss the UEFI feature. So I select Microsoft Windows and then uh, I'm going to change that. Uh, select your uh, virtual machine location uh, let's change the name open the leap 50.3 click on next as you can see now you can choose UEFI or BIOS I prefer UEFI okay next choose number of processors number of corporate processor I think two is enough next select your uh, memory up uh, two gig I can increase to four gigabytes okay next Network configuration, you can use bridge networking, uh, NAT, or, or host only networking. NAT is good choice. And IO controller type, LSI Logic SAS. Next, virtual disk type. Um, in my environment, SATA is better. Next. Uh, and this configuration next select your uh, set your size and I'm going to select a for virtual disk as a single file Next, uh, I leave file name 
پس اوکی click on finish close uh, shut it down before the installation we have to change some configuration click on settings go on options uh, and change guest operating system type to linux and also select uh, zuse linux enterprise 64 bit version 15 save okay that's it i've created a virtual machine before i'm going to install on this virtual machine configurations are the same as i've created uh, recently okay click on uh, startup you have four options as you can see put from the hard drive installation upgrade and more options are available click on installation wait until the operating system uh, booting process to complete loading basic drivers Hardware detection. Okay, graphical installer is available now. Process of installations are easy and most of them are automated. Network initialization. Is processing. The language and keyboard layout are initialized with the language setting you have chosen on the boot screen. Change them uh, here if necessary. Read the license agreement. Uh, it is presented in the language you have chosen on the boot screen. License translation uh, translations are available. Proceed with next. In case uh, no network interface could be configured uh, automatically via DHCP, the network settings dialog opens. If you prefer uh, to install opens with a leap with no network connection, choose next to proceed. However, configuring the network at this uh, stage is recommended since it uh, will allow to install the latest updates and security fixes from the online update uh, repository. A working network connection will also give you access to uh, additional software repositories. Uh, this step is skipped if a network interface was successfully configured via DHCP. You've got two choices. Enabling online repositories and uh, add-on as the online software sources, so-called repositories for OpenSUSE leap from um, 
opens with the repositories. Uh, it's also add the update repository for opens with the lib. This ensures uh, that the system will be installed with the most current package without having to apply the updates after installation. Activating this option uh, is recommended if you have a good network connection. Uh, also, you can include add-on products from separate media. I prefer using uh, local media uh, because of my network and I can say that installation process will be longer if you uh, select and activate online repositories. Okay, in this step you can set system roles. System roles are predefined use cases which tailor the system for the selected scenario. Select the desktop system you would like to use KD and Genome are among the most widely used desktops on Linux. If you prefer a different desktop, choose other uh, for more options. The XFCE desktop and the LXDE desktop are fast and lightweight desktop environments uh, suitable for modest hardware uh, with minimal X window. Install a graphical window manager that allows to running a standalone X applications and choose windows uh, but uh, doesn't provide the usual integrated desktop functionality. In minimal server selection uh, text mode only um, console terminals are available. I'm going to select uh, desktop with KD Plasma. Okay next step review the partition setup proposed by the system if necessary uh, change it you have the following options edit uh, proposal settings create partition setup expert partitioner Edit proposal settings uh, lets you change uh, options for the proposed setting but not the suggested partition layout itself create partition setup select a disk uh, to which to apply the proposal and expert partitioner uh, opens the expert partitioner to accept the proposed uh, setup without any change uh, you can choose next to proceed but uh, I would like uh, make a little bit change and explain more uh, on this step let's uh, start with current proposal As you can see in UEFI schema, uh, we have uh, EFI partition and swap partition and the rest of the space is dedicated to BTRFS. Let's back and select next option. I select uh, my disk and create first partition for EFI EFI boot partition next file system type FAT next I'm creating the second one or boot partition A slash boot file system type extension 4 next I'm creating swap space now next Swap next the next partition is slash I think fifteen gigabyte is desired. Operating system extension four. 
x and the rest of space is using for home partition we can x home I change to extension 4 you have a lot of choice for selecting file system my current layout is created as you can see click on next or next step select the clock and time zone to use in your system to manually adjust the time or to configure an NTP server for time synchronization choose other settings I easily select my time zone and uh, click next okay next step to create a local user type the first and last name in the user's full name field the login name in the username field and the password in the password field I'm going to define my username and password the password should be at least eight characters long and should contain both uppercase and lowercase letters and numbers the maximum length uh, for password is 72 characters and passwords are case sensitive for security reasons it's also strongly recommended not to be uh, not to be able to automatic login you should also not use this password for the system administrator but rather provide a separate root password in the next installation step uh, proceed with next type a password for the system administrator account uh, this step is skipped if you have chosen uh, use this password for, uh, for the system administrator in the previous system you should never forget the root password after you entered it here the password cannot be retrieved I prefer creating a local user on each system it's more uh, secure and better than defining root password and activating root account uh, for lagging okay next screen uh, use the installation settings screen to review um, and if necessary change several proposed installation settings the current configuration is listed for each setting to change it click the headline some settings such as firewall uh, or SSH uh, can directly be changed by clicking the uh, respective links in software section the default scope of software includes the base system and X window with the selected desktop clicking software opens the software selection and system tasks screen where you can change the software selection by selecting or deselecting patterns each pattern uh, contains several software packages needed for a specific functions for example web and lamp server or a print server uh, you can find more information on uh, Zuse website for detail and also you can browse yourself uh, in booting section this section shows the bootloader configuration changing the default uh, changing the defaults is only recommended if really needed also you can uh, uh, change firewall and ssh settings default system target by default the system boots into the graphical target with network multi-user and display manager support switch to multi-user if you don't need to log in uh, via display manager and also system uh, view detailed hardware information by clicking system in the resulting screen you can also change kernel settings
to configure the network choose a network interface from the list and click edit to change its settings uh, use uh, the tabs to configure DNS and routing After finalizing, click install. Depending on uh, your software selection, you may need to agree to license agreements before the installation confirmation. A screen pop-ups. Up to this point, no change have been made uh, to your system. After you click install a second time, the installation process starts. During the installation, the process is shown in detail as you can see here. And after the installation routine has finished, the computer is rebooted into the uh, new installed system. So we are waiting to finish these steps. <laughs>
Congratulations, installation process is finished and you can now log into new system. Let me know what you guys would like to see from an advanced configuration. But today I wanted to target this for beginners so you can get started and use OpenSUSE and get familiar with Linux, especially if you are coming from Windows. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any feedback or comments, please let me know below. And if you would like to see more tech videos, hit the subscribe button and check me out on my website, itstorage.net. Calm. Bye for now.